Let's take a deep breath. This word, prejudice, it's not a bad word. Prejudice helps you choose lanes in traffic. It gives you two socks that match in color and grabs avocado over zucchini. Prejudice is our gut making choices. It's our style. It's the rhythm of our own personality. Our prejudice, it's who we are. Shaming or stifling this prejudice is a form of self-abandonment. It's the group mind suppressing the identity. Listening to the group is literally the same as ignoring yourself. The dark wolf inside of us that we fear, that's our self-righteousness. When we are convinced of our righteousness, we are justified to violate the liberty of others. Righteousness has no self-reflection. It demands condemnation. It's a crusade with volunteers called to fight. Since before the election, we've seen crowdfunded gangs roaming our nation like rock stars on tour. This tour is followed and supported by the media and praised by our social elite and royalty. Almost every arrest in Seville was out of state. Charlottesville, it was another venue, another show on the tour of the band, The Angry Villagers. Their songs have lyrics and the fans get lost in the religion. Nazis, rebels, communists, terrorists, council members, political leaders. They all came to throw down the mosh pit after seeing other cities advertising the music. These are the sides. This is the sides we're talking about. Their names are meaningless because they're all in chorus. It's the feeling that brings these people together. American culture has turned identity into a currency. It's worth so much our young people no longer see any value in themselves. The hearts of our youth are quaked with cavities, each of them craving and fearing their own identity. We see evidence of this in acts of public self-flogging, our kids disparaging their own culture, gender, race, proclivity, history. What about public age dysmorphia, where adult children are literally breaking down and turning into five-year-olds in public with timeout zones, safe spaces. Beneath these actions, there is a common theme. It's a blatant attack on the dignity of the self in front of the group. This is quickly dismissed as virtue signaling, but it's actually worse. It's really not quite that simple. There's some footage from Charlottesville where the mob was yelling in unison, Black Lives Matter and White Lives Matter. They were yelling this at themselves. These lyrics may seem different, but the jam is exactly the same. A sea of individuals screaming from the pain of abandonment. They want to matter to themselves. They are asking the outside to fix their inside. As to the nation's reaction to Charlottesville, the nation saw a white identity for the first time in their lives, and it's scary. They see no place for it. They have zero tolerance for it. The nation rebukes the white identity. This reaction to that anger proves the entire weekend. Black lives matter. White lives matter. No. Liberty matters. How we treat ourselves matters. When we stop pandering to identity, identity loses all currency. In this void, the self can reemerge and we can all get back to work. Our only enemy in the fight against racism is identity politics.